Smith is claiming that there are no globe believers with any geometric evidence of the globe. So I'm here to change his mind. Of course, my first question is, how can he claim to understand geometry and not understand that we live on a globe? Well, in regards to the shape of the Earth, this is the basis of Bev's geometry. If all horizontals are parallel to the plane of the horizon, then all horizontals are parallel to each other. So Bev claims this is not possible. His horizontal plane in England should be parallel to my horizontal plane in Thailand. So on one hand, he claims the surface of the Earth is not a sphere, but he also claims that he is not a flat earther. He says if the Earth is flat, then there would be no measurable change in elevation. Elevation is a measured change in the vertical axis, therefore the Earth is not flat. Of course, this is a straw man because no one in this debate has ever claimed that the flat Earth doesn't have terrain with measurable elevation. So even though Bev and his companions are tricked by the word flat earther, I'm going to call this the flat earth model because like flat earthers, they believe that water conforms to a horizontal plane. And in regards to geometry, I'm going to use this definition, a branch of mathematics that deals with measurement, properties, and relationships of points, lines, angles, surfaces, and solids. So I'm going to take geometric measurements of the observed path of the sun from my location in Bangkok and see which model best explains this. Now a comment in this video shows that Bev has never thought about this. Howard Moore asked Bev this question, and where do you think the sun is at midnight? And Bev's reply was, did you seriously just ask me where the sun is at night? Are you okay? So I had to add my two cents worth and said, yes, the sun has to return to the east to rise again in the morning. So what path does it take during the night? You seriously never gave this any thought during your life? So let's see if we can answer this question. What path does the sun take at night to return to the east to rise again in the morning? The easiest way to visualize this is on or within a few weeks of the equinox because we have approximately 12 hours of day and night. And as an observer, you are between sunrise and sunset. Now we know the location of sunrise and sunset. So the next question is, where is the noon sun? Now from Bangkok, the sun at solar noon is quite high in the sky. So now I know what the path of the sun is during the course of the day. Next, we want to find the angle of the solar noon sun from zenith at your location. Now, without a measurement, you can determine this from your latitude. Since I'm about 13.7563 degrees north of the equator, that means that solar noon is about 13.8 degrees off from zenith. Now, this is something that I actually measured. This was in response to a request from Sly Spark Kane for an experiment that he was doing. This was about the time that I first heard of the Flat Earth. This was before I started my channel. And back then, I was going by the username of Kuhn Rich. So 23 participants in nine different countries measured the length of the sun's shadow at noon on the September equinox, and that allowed Sly Sparkane to conduct a scientific experiment similar to that of Aristosthenes over 2,000 years ago. And of course, the results utterly destroyed the flat earth, because in regards to the geometry of a flat earth using a sextant, the sun should be at the same altitude for all locations. And you can see that it's not even close. If you haven't seen the video, I'll leave a link in my description. So I used a large book to do this, which gave me a vertical height of 30.6 centimeters. And at 12, the shadow length was 7.6 centimeters. And from that, I was able to calculate this angle right here. This is a simple trigonometric calculation. And the answer is 13.948 degrees. And I'll round that off to 13.9 degrees. And since this angle is 13.9 degrees, I also know that the angle from zenith to the sun is also 13.9 degrees, which of course means that the angle of the sun above the horizon is 76.1 degrees. 
So even though my measuring method was a bit crude, it is a close match to what you would expect to see for my latitude. And it is also a close match for the altitude of the sun above the horizon on the equinox. This is from timeanddate.com. Now we can answer our question. What path does the sun take at night to return to the east to rise again in the morning? Since this is the observed angle of the sun to the horizon at sunset, I know the sun is going to continue on that same path after sunset. The sun is not going to change direction at the horizon. And since the sun is returning to the east at night, that means that the sun path at night is opposite of the observed day path. And this means that the midnight sun is below the surface from your location, 180 degrees opposite of the observed noon sun. And this is a concept that is so simple to understand. My six-year-old step-grandson figured it out within a couple of seconds when I asked him, where does the sun go at night? And of course, it is quite obvious that this does not work on a flat Earth but it is easily explained by the GLOBE model. And this works no matter where you live. This is from my hometown of Seattle where I grew up, and I was able to figure this out when I was a kid. Now, I'm not exactly certain where Bev lives in England, but I know he's been to the Blackpool area quite a few times, and even from that location, the sun goes below the surface of the earth from Blackpool as it returns to the east to rise again in the morning. And if Bev had tried thinking, he would be able to figure this out too. Next, I'm going to use some time-lapse measurements of the sun to support my previous claim. And I can do that with this feature on the P900. What it does is take a series of photographs for 50 minutes, and it will condense it into a 10-second time-lapse. I combine two photographs to make this panoramic view looking east from my condo in Bangkok. These are the compass directions from northeast on the left all the way to southeast on the right, and this is the approximate location of the horizon. And I'll show you time lapses from three different dates, including the June and December solstice. I'm going to start with these two time lapses taken on the 29th of September. I was hoping to get one on the equinox, but this is during the rainy season, and we didn't have any clear weather until this morning. I also used 11 DN welder's glass to cut down on glare. So I started this when the sun was just at the corner of that building there, and this is 50 minutes or 12.5 degrees of sun movement. And here's the second time lapse, and again the sun will move 12.5 degrees during that 50 minutes. So again, this is how much the sun moved in two 50 minute segments of 12.5 degrees each. And on the left I have scaled these brackets to represent 60 minutes or 15 degrees each, so this is how much the sun moves in two hours. And since this is the approximate location of the horizon, this is where the sun was at sunrise. So again, since I know the path of the sun is not going to change direction at the horizon, I can extend this observed line that I see during the day down below the horizon. And since I know this is the location of the sun one to two hours after sunrise, I know that this is the location of the sun below the horizon one and two hours before sunrise. And here's the path of that sun on the panorama. So next I'm going to use a shorter time lapse that I used on this video that I uploaded last June. Would sunrises look the same on a flat earth and a globe? So this is on the June solstice. The sun will rise right above the corner of the building here. And you will also understand why I use welder's glass on the previous video, because the glare is pretty intense. And here's that sun path on the panorama intersecting the corner of the building right here. And finally, here's sunrise on the December solstice. So it makes a quick appearance between the buildings here. And when the sun finally does come above the corner of the building up here, since it's much higher in the sky, the glare is really intense. And here comes the sun. And here's the observed 
December solstice sun path on the panorama and as you can see it makes a short appearance between the buildings right here. Now the data is from timeanddate.com and as a side note you can see that since I live close to the equator the length of the day does not vary that much during the year. On the June solstice we have a day length of 12 hours and 56 minutes and on the December solstice it's only 11 hours and 19 minutes. That is only a difference of about an hour and 40 minutes during the year. Now since the North Pole is 5,272 miles to the left of the screen, I think it's quite obvious that the sun I see throughout the year never goes around the North Pole as it must on the flat Earth. And of course this is evidence that neither Eric Duvet nor Phuket Word, who both live in Thailand, are thinking critically. So this diagram represents the observed sun path that I see throughout the year. Here is zenith, and since I live to the south of the Tropic of Cancer, during the June solstice, the sun at noon is to the north of me. Now this is not only confirmed by timeanddate.com, but also by suncalc.org. And what's nice about this website is they include a graphic and it shows the path of the sun from your location at any time during the year. And here's the path of the sun on the 21st of June with solar noon to the north of me. And of course, this is what I actually observe. And this includes the compass directions for sunrise and sunset. And of course, this is also true for the observed sun path on the December solstice. So let's see how these observations work on the flat Earth model. Here is Bangkok. I'm south of the Tropic of Cancer and north of the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, since we have an almost equal amount of day and night on the equinox, that means that I should see sunrise up over here and sunset up over here. Now, as I showed you earlier, from Bangkok, the length of the day does not vary that much throughout the year. So that means that on the June solstice, the sun would rise approximately in this location and would set over here. And on the December solstice, I'd see sun rise at approximately this location and the sun would set over here. Now, when we put a compass at my location, we could see that the sun should rise towards the northeast and set towards the northwest all throughout the year. But again, this is what I actually see, and it's quite obvious that it is not even close to the geometry of sunrise and sunset on the flat Earth model. And another thing, all flat earthers would have to do is some simple math, and they would understand that the sun would never set on a flat Earth. Now for someone that comes from a channel that constantly talks about geometric proof, maybe Bev should have tried thinking and applied some geometry to the question, where does the sun go at night? Now flat earthers like to think they're woke, but I actually think it's time for them to wake up and smell the coffee because the evidence is overwhelming. We live on a globe.